We have seen that for an isolated macroscopic system, if we prepare an ordered situation, a non-random situation, either by the virtue of an external intervention or due to a large uh, but rare large fluctuation, the system will always evolve in time uh, towards a random a uniform state. So um, there is a preferred direction uh, in time. So we have for an isolated macroscopic system, the preferred direction in time is from ordered uh, non-random Uh, state to towards disordered random uniform state. So we have seen this in the case of uh, having an imaginary partition inside a box and the gas molecules when they are all trapped on the left hand side, as soon as uh, we release the system, we find that the gas molecules will move in such a way that will randomize uh, the, the distribution of gas molecules and we will have the most random state at equilibrium. So this is the uh, preference in time preferred direction in the time in the evolution of the system. Uh, however, if I consider a situation when the isolated macroscopic system is at equilibrium to start with, okay, so if the system is undisturbed for a long time, That means, in other words, uh, at equilibrium. Then we don't have any preference uh, in time. So we have uh, no preferred direction in time. What we will see is the system will keep its equilibrium conditions except for small fluctuations and we have seen large fluctuations are uh, very rare. Now, if we have a process for the system, uh, under what conditions is this process going to be considered a reversible process or an irreversible process? So let's think about this. Um, a process that the system is carried through is said to be irreversible uh, if the time reversed process would almost never occur. So this is the definition of irreversibility. Now, I want to look at the case of having a single particle inside a container. And here is my imaginary partition right in the middle. There is the left hand side and there is the right hand side. And this single particle can be on the left hand side or on the right hand side the probability of having the particle on the left hand side is one half because there are two possible configurations and uh, the probability of having it on the right hand side is one half so since i have equal probabilities for the two configurations the relative frequency of these events are the same 
therefore there will be no preference in the time evolution of the system. The system is equally likely to be found to have the single particle on the left hand side or the right hand side. Alright, so this configuration will give me no preference. Okay, now I want to increase the number of uh, particles to four. And let's say that initially I have all four particles on the left hand side and then in the most uniform or random configuration I will have two particles on the left hand side and two particles on the right hand side. So remember the probability of this configuration we have worked out before all particles are on the left first second third and fourth particles are on the left what was the probability it is 1 over 16 now for the configuration where I have a probability of having two particles on the left or having equally we can say two particles on the right so probability for four particles n is equal to 2 n prime is equal to 2 what is this probability this we have worked out the number of configurations is 6 so it's 6 divided by 16 let me remind you what those configurations were I can have left left right right left right left right right left left right then I can have right left right left um, then I can have right right left left um, there should be one more so let's think about the other probability oh yes I'm missing one more here it is left uh, right right left okay so one two three four five six configurations that give me this scenario of having two particles on the left two particles on the right the highest number of configurations that correspond to uh, the most uniform or random or disordered state is this one where I have two molecules on the left and two molecules on the right so if I leave the system undisturbed for a long time the probability of the system going back to its initial state is 1 over 16 so remember in the case of one particle there was no preference they were equally likely to be the particles equally likely to be on the left or on the right so this is a reversible process but on the other hand in the case of four particles going back from the most uniform state towards a, an ordered state the non-uniform state is somewhat unlikely so this I can say is somewhat irreversible now when is it almost completely irreversible uh, I can consider another case if n the number of particles is comparable to Avogadro's number then the system will become uh, almost impossible to revert to its most ordered state uh, the process that takes me from the ordered state to the disordered state will be irreversible. Now I would like to remind you um, the concept of reversibility or irreversibility in the case of thermodynamics. So here is uh, what you will recall as the Carnot cycle. The Carnot cycle 
we will talk about in more detail later on in this course. Uh, basically consists of two isothermal and two adiabatic processes uh, where we have heat exchange with uh, two reservoirs at different temperatures, uh, T and T prime. And uh, in this process, what makes this process special is that it is reversible. So when we say that the process is reversible, what do we mean? You can start at point A, go to point B, C, D and end up in A. Or you can start at point A, go to point D, point C, point B and back to point A. It's a reversible cycle. So that means uh, what, uh, what we have in mind for an irreversible process in thermodynamics is that the process cannot be reversed back to its initial state going through exactly the same path. Okay, so you might say, uh, well, I was able to uh, go from a uniform state, for example, in the case of movable piston here, to a very ordered state by pushing this piston, so by external intervention, I can take it uh, back to its ordered state and then I wait for a long time, the molecules diffuse and I have the most uh, uniform or uh, random state. Uh, and then I can do the same thing again and I can reverse this process. So does that make this process reversible? The answer is no, because for a process to be reversible, you should be following exactly the same path. So uh, doing this external intervention to go back to its initial state is uh, basically not making the process of the molecules diffusing to fill the full volume reversible. Okay, so um, in strict terms, for a process to be reversible, um, the initial state, initial macro state, uh, must be also equal to the final macro state but this should be carried out using the same uh, process or the same trajectory on the PV diagram. If that's the case then we will have a reversible process. Okay, so uh, once again I would like to stress the difference between reversible and irreversible processes. Reversible process is one that takes the system uh, back to its initial uh, state. Uh, so the final uh, state is the initial state. Uh, by following the same trajectory. So if these molecules uh, collided with each other and started diffusing to form the uniform state that's shown in part A, um, I should have these molecules going through the same trajectories, the same collisions uh, to re-establish this ordered state in part C. So that would be reversible but this is almost impossible because the probability of the ordered state for so many molecules is very very minute it's a tiny uh, probability so it's very unlikely and then therefore we call this process irreversible even though we can have an external intervention to establish the uh, the state where we have all molecules on the left. So it doesn't happen spontaneously, therefore uh, it is irreversible.